What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode number 25 of Park to Prem here with Nottingham Forest. Today we've got a live com double header, one game at the start of January and one towards the end of it as we take on Chelsea and Manchester City. And uh, well of course last episode I discussed not being sure exactly what games I was going to cover. In the end, I think I've probably made the right decision because as you'll notice in the EFL Cup game that I was weighing up so heavily we drew against Man City. I'll show you this game first. Nothing happened in it. No highlights, no nothing. So yeah, a clean slate for the second game of today's episode where we will be away from home with quite a lot to do if we do want to move on. Anyway, elsewhere in the league and in the FA Cup, we've got a couple of results to talk about. The first of which was actually against Leeds. A 3-2 win in this one. Um, yeah, of course, some momentum gathered perhaps after the win against Manchester United, and it was certainly felt in this game. Owen Ricketts with one of the weirdest goals I've seen all year in FM. If you've seen a goal like it, please let me know. He chipped the keeper from 25 yards out. But this wasn't like your traditional FM21 chip finish that you see all the time. This has come down with snow on it. Either way, they got a goal back, another throw in, leading to an opportunity this time for them, um, meant that it was 1-1 for all but one minute, because Amlo, he, he didn't like seeing Karamoko Dembele getting the goal, he didn't like having his spotlight stolen, he grabbed a goal. In the second half, Piotra got one to add to his collection, and despite a late Fabian goal for Leeds United, we held on for an all-important 3-2 win. We needed this, it keeps the pressure going at the top. Um, it was not comfortable by any means, but a win is a win. Unfortunately, a draw is also a draw. Against Southampton in the FA Cup third round, it finished 3-3. I'm not going to show all the highlights for this game, but you can see the stats here. It was a very even game, and I think the pick of the goals was our first. It was to make it 1-1, Marcelo with a superb finish from up close. Not a bad little assist either by Setford in goal for Southampton. Yeah, it was it was one of those games. We fought back well, though. Marcelo with two goals was great to see. I did play a rotated team in this competition. Obviously, that is going to go to a replay, which we have to contend with in just a couple of days' time. Anyway, just to have a quick look at the Premier League table, uh, how it looks right now. Uh, it is ourselves and Chelsea, top of the table, both tied on 44 points, which means today's opening game has quite a lot on the line when it comes to the title race. Hopefully, though, we're going to be able to get a result against them here today to kick things off. Anyway, no kind of beating around the bush, no time to mess around. We are getting straight into this. Um, just as soon as I work out what I want to do with Ilya Akamash, who has continued to do absolutely superbly, it has to be said. Um, I think before we do the game against Manchester City, I might do a bit more of a kind of rundown of the team and how it's performing thus far this year. You'll notice a new name in the first team. We've got Juan Esteban Bedoya. Uh, the Colombian has now joined us from Atletico Nacional. He's yet to make his Premier League debut, but looking at his numbers, he's been putting in some good performances in Colombia. And at 18 years old, we've perfectionist personality there's a hell of a lot to like a player not dissimilar to Erk who I uh well I'm quite keen to give as much first team football to as possible just in order to further his development you can see Erk here back from injury back in the first team not been playing that great though since his return and in fact actually injuries across the board have been a little bit of an issue for us you can see even now a Sun Sao is out with an injury Matez Fernandez is out with an injury so with two deep line playmakers out we turn to the old guard it's Gary Healy who's gonna have to well hopefully string the passes together from deep for us so yeah that's a little bit of an injury concern I suppose the defensive mid position um, across the board though we are you know jiggling a few little issues when it comes to injuries something that we didn't really contend with last year um, obviously the only real change in factors is all the midweek European games combined with just the cup runs that we're currently on there's just a lot of football being played you know it is that time of the year December January the injuries do tend to pile up just a little bit um, if we look at our injury history you can see here uh, the dash line is last season's injuries um the solid line is this season's injuries so uh already after eight days in january we've had five injuries so yeah a bit of an injury crisis i suppose you could say going on at the moment but hopefully it's not going to impact us as we continue our quest uh well to hopefully get a result against chelsea i've also realized I've not got to the Chelsea game yet. So you know what? I'm going to go forward to this. I'll join you guys in a second. It's at Stamford Bridge. How have I forgotten to go forward? How has that happened? I don't think you're actually a football manager, a YouTuber, until you start recording an episode on the wrong day. It's not the first time it's happened, but you know what? Nobody's perfect. 
I definitely am not. Unfortunately for us, Man City and United did pretty perfectly prior to our game against Chelsea. They have both won. So as a result, looking at the league table going into today's episode, you've got four teams on 44 points. Um, this could be one hell of a title race this season. It feels like it. Of course, whoever wins out of ourselves and Chelsea puts themselves in a great little position to go on and potentially win the league. I say that. We're only about 20 games into the season. Let's not get too rash with any kind of conclusions. Of course, as I already mentioned, we've got a bit of an issue when it comes to fitness and kind of injuries across the board. Asun Sao is actually fit now. Kind of. Um, I think it's probably worth risking him, to be honest, over Healy. Um, of course, Healy, once upon a time, was a loyal servant to the club who we thought had the sunshine kind of coming out of his butt. It, it turned out it wasn't coming out of his butt at all. It was just a reflection of like a light. He's not actually that good at all. And actually, a Sun Sao, um, frankly, is just a much, much better player creatively, defensively, mentally. Um, yes, sorry, Healy. I'm just listing off reasons why you're not as good. Elsewhere in the team, of course, we have got Steve Secker out injured. If you missed last episode, he's out for a long, long time. So we're kind of having to deal with that a little bit. And Akamash would normally be the player I bring in there. Um, I can actually get him onto the bench, which is quite nice. But uh, do I want to start Akamash? Do I want... I don't know if I do. Like, Akamash has been playing really well, but contending with injuries. Form had been declining as well previously kind of prior to the injury, partially because he's just not been able to get a run of kind of games when he's been fit. He's constantly been wrestling with issues. So actually, I think with that in mind, we'll play Samake out on the right-hand side on his right foot and uh, Kusat uh, out on the left-hand side. And I hope that they could do the business in the wired area. Of course, Premier League top goal scorer Finn Amlo leading the way. Seven goals in eight games for Germany. Blooming good, Finn Amlo. But what I would say is he's not improved much since he came to the club. Now, obviously, there's a few green arrows here, but actually, if we look at the development over the course of his time at the club, yes, there's been a little bit of improvement in a few areas, but I do have a little bit of a concern that Finn might be close to his potential, which, you know what? He's playing so well, doesn't really matter. He's got 17 goals in 19 Premier League games, but um, could he be that leading striker for a Champions League team? I still feel like there's might maybe better options out there, but... You know what? He could have a, a you know a late surge in development, and I look like a fool. Um, I want to temper expectations, though. I think Fam Finn Amlo is good. I just don't know if he's kind of Mike Frost good. I, I feel like he might might be hitting a ceiling that we don't know he's going to hit yet. Um, anyway, you can see here Chelsea, obviously Frank Lampard, still their manager after all these years. Both Oli and Frank, both at the club. You can see looking at their team, they've got Pedri, uh, Tavares, they've got Ben Chilwell and Reese James, <laughs> left back and right back, and Onana, not suffering from a drugs ban at the moment, uh, 10 years into the future. For us, well, we've got three wins in our last five, but two draws on the bounce is a bit disappointing, and you know the situation. Four teams tied on points at the end of this game, they won't be. There'll be at least, you know, two teams um, who have run away with it, or at least one team that's run away with it. A draw, and it makes things even more close. Um, it's going to be tough, though. Away from home against Chelsea, this is not a game we go into expecting a, a win by any means, and... Ah, it's not a great start. Bruno Tavares scores. Heads it goalwards. I think it was Chilwell with the cross in. I mean, could we have done more there? That feels like a very soft goal to concede. You can see... Um, Roberts is having a, re a wrestling match at the moment over in the left-back position. Saar is struggling from injuries, uh, or with injuries and kind of fitness issues. So I've had to play Roberts out there. And on that occasion, considering he's a natural centre-back, it's not a great spot for him to be in. Also worth noting, if we were to lose this game 2-0, we would drop down to fourth. Because uh, goal difference is equally as close between all these teams. But hopefully we can steady the ship now. We've not conceded a second one right away. And actually, let's get let's get a little shout. Demand more. If in doubt, get shouty shouty. Maybe I'm going to regret saying that. Pedri, ball from deep. It's put in. Ruiz's effort, I think, was blocked there. It was offside anyway. It wouldn't have counted. But, uh, well, at the moment, set pieces and balls into the box are causing us issues. We've now got a, uh, a free kick here. It's going to be dosted over it. This is in a dangerous spot. And he's just curled it around the wall. I mean, hmm. Can I, who do you blame there? I feel like the wall is not in a very good position. How's he bent this in? I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a good free kick, but it's not flown into the top corner. <laughs> who is Doe? Let's have a quick look at him. He's a deep line playmaker. 
Ah, I mean, he's... Yeah, he is quite good. Mohamed Doe, he's an England international with 18 caps at the age of 23. He is good. He is good. <laughs> he is good. I can't even be mad. They've scored a free kick and then they've obviously scored from that corner. Oh, not corner. From the throw-in that we didn't really deal with. And we are down in third. And it could be 3-0 before half-time. Stop it, football manager. It's 3-0. We have just not got going in this game. Ah, we're being embarrassed. And after the result last time against United, where we... And, you know, since then, to be fair, our defence has been wobbly. But since that result against United, where I felt like everything was going so well, we have looked a little questionable defensively. And in this game here, we've been torn open in the opening stages. I'm going to tell the players to show me something else. In fact, I think this probably deserves a water bottle to be thrown at everyone. I don't want to just throw one at the squad. I want a water bottle thrown at every single player. We are going to change some stuff here. Because this is not working. We are going to play the 4-2-3-1. Um, I'm a bit concerned by the bookings that we've got. Um, also, just players have not turned up across the board, which is never a great sign. Uh, in terms of how we're going to change things, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We are going to bring in... Um, we're going to move Samake out onto the left. We're going to bring Akamash in on the right-hand side. And I'm going to move Marcelo into Shadow Striker. Marcelo yet to score in the Premier League. We're getting plenty of goals for us in the Europa League and other cup competitions. Marcelo, I need you to get a goal here. I mean, at this point, look, we've got nothing to lose. We've been poor in the first half. I might as well try playing the 4-2-3-1 that we like to play, um, you know, from time to time and that I'm happy to switch to when we're chasing a game. I have to be realistic, though. We're 3-0 down against the team who won the Club World Cup. And as I talked about at the start of the season, Chelsea are blooming good, everyone. Um, yeah, they, they, they won the Club World Cup prior to last season. They won the Premier League four years in a row. I think they probably do have the best team in the world of football. That said... 3-0 just, it doesn't reflect very well on me or the club, does it, really? We need to try and save face here. It could get worse before it gets better, though. Tavera's ghosting inside. Hits it on his left over the crossbar. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get another shout of demand more. First one worked so well, so why not do it again? I will say, an hour gone, they've not scored against us since the, the second half got underway. In fact, they've not had too many opportunities. We've got a long throw opportunity, perhaps. It's going to be Roberts with it. Samake... Back to Roberts. A Sun Sao on a booking needs to be well behaved. Dinks it in. Marcelo nods it down to Ricketts. It's blocked, but Regina's there. Ilias is there. Akamash gets us a goal back. And I have been looking to get an Akamash face, but Akamash plays for the kind of Barcelona Academy. He's only 16 years old. And there's just no good photos that exist. There's like some that I could use, but they're not like proper footballer photos. They're the kind of photos that look like they've been stolen from his Instagram page or something. You, you know the kind of face pack pictures I'm talking about. But make no mistake, he's been good for us. I, maybe I should have started him from the beginning. We'll go for another shout out to Man Moore. I mean, if we could get another one back here, I'll, I will start to dream. It's the hope that kills you. That's what they say. It's the, it's the hope that hurts. That said, how long is this hope going to last? Chelsea bringing the ball forward, although... Well, Regina gets a tackle away, and I have been informed it's Rogina. I don't, it is Rogina, apparently, but I have been calling him Roger a lot, and I feel like at this point it's too late to turn back. Anyway, what can Regina do? He can't get there. They've hit the woodwork. Get it away. That'll, that'll kind of do, although now Roberts is sat down. The physio stood over him. We don't have a left back. That could be a problem as play develops here. Although blocked, Akamash away. Yeah, we don't have a left back. We don't have a left back. Everyone remain calm. I mean, it doesn't look good for Roberts, does it? He's right. Take him off. I've seen enough. I've get him off the pitch. Malang Sar. Not a hundred percent match fit and has been suffering a little bit of injuries. At thirty years old, he's not really a player I want to risk playing when he's lacking match sharpness. But the, the time has come. Anyway, Regina bringing the ball forward. Inside to Marcelo. Options inside. Ball whipped in. Samake's there. Heads it just over the crossbar. I mean, we're not giving up in this game. We've, show, we've shown a bit of, I don't know, fight about us in this second half. Unfortunately, we needed it to be there for the whole game. It can't just appear towards the end. Anyway, it's Reese James bringing the ball forward here. Inside to Teodoro. Now in Logo, and now with Montserrat, the country has become a player. I know, what a terrifying thought that is. Tavares, dispossessed by Saar, but straight back to Reese James. He whips it in, and that header 
was not far over the crossbar. We've, we've got to go to attacking here. And I don't really love it. It's not something I want to do. But you know what? We've got to take a risk here. We have to leave ourselves a little exposed at the back. Commit men further up the pitch. Oh, it's and Sal. I should have I should have I should have just played Healy. I don't have a centre mid, everyone. I can actually play centre mid. Uh he's played it once. He he can he can play it again. I've got faith in him. Right. At this point, in case it isn't obvious, we're in a bit of a pickle because we we need goals. So with that in mind, let's just let's just go more attacking everyone. I know what you're thinking. Malang Sar can't play left wing back and Akamash can't play deep line playmaker. Look, there's only one way you develop in football, and that's by just doing it. Let's try and play down the middle. We can look for the overlap and look to pass into space. We're going to go more direct. Our possession, press. Tighter marking. Just, just slide everything to the right. It's the age-old football manager trick, everyone. You sat thinking, Jack, how do I get better at football manager? Just slide everything to the right. I mean, this, this could end very badly for us. There could be a few late goals going against us, but a 3-1 down, look. If it stays as it is, we're going to be in fourth anyway. We might as well try and get a goal back to go ahead of Man City again. Yeah, about that. Um, we might as well try and get two goals to go above Man City. We might as well, <laughs> we might as well try and keep it going. Like, if we're going to go down, I'd rather go down trying to get back into it. Unfortunately, though, Sun Sao will now be suspended. And, uh, well, with Mateus Fernandez uh, out, the next couple of games could be a little bit interesting with Healy in the deep line playmaker role for us. It's a nice finish by Grosso, to be fair. It makes it 4-1. I think, to be completely honest, we've just not really got going here. We've not, we've not looked good. We've not had a good day at the races. Chilwell with it now at left back. Inside to Largo. Montserrat with it. I mean, it's just... He's named after a country. He's named after an island. That's not allowed. Reese James with it in the wide areas. Yeah, this is... Can I... I just... Can I go cry? Can I go cry? I mean... <laughs> it's a, I don't know what to say. I'm, it's very rare that I'm lost for words, everyone. But this goal has left me lost for words. He's hit it first time as the ball goes across him into the roof of the net, into the top corner. Um, yeah, you know what? I, I will not. I will not bring, blame Toby for that goal going in. I mean, ultimately, no one showed up, and we've been absolutely humbled, which sucks because before the red card, we were actually looking to kind of get back into the game with ten minutes left. That's not to say we would have got back into it, but we, we will never know because a Sun Sao has the discipline of a rabid wolf. I don't know why a rabid wolf. Answers on a I'm just, I'm upset. I'm upset. I mean, Roberts is out with a tight calf. For the amount he was rolling around on the floor, I, I was expecting something more serious. I mean, the good news is for me that we've got a few theoretically easier games coming back up in terms of when we're going to come back we're going to hop forward to the man city game it's at the end of the month just before deadline day not currently making any transfer deals i've got some money in the bank after this result maybe i need to go and make some panic transfers right i'm going forward i'll see you guys at the end of january hopefully i've not completely lost the plot let's go see how i got on shall we Okay, folks, we are back. It is the end of January, and as you may be able to tell by the fact my club balance is £7 million, I have spent a little bit of money. And actually, I've spent a little money and then some, because I had a bid come in for a player that I just couldn't really refuse. And it wasn't for Matt Smith. I'm sorry, Matt, you're not you're not that relevant. It was for Malang Sar. Yeah, this might come as a little bit of a surprise selling him, to be honest. Uh, but when title rival Manchester United came in, he wanted out. He's 31 years old now. And I've just received, I think it's 30 million that could rise up to 43 million. Yeah, 35 million up front could rise as high as 43 million. I think for a 31-year-old, whilst he has got great natural fitness and he probably does have a fair few years left in him, it's just a little bit too much money to refuse. Of course, Saar came in to be a left centre-back in our three-at-the-back system two years ago for £13 million. He's had two really good seasons for us in the Premier League, but... Uh, yeah, I, I felt like we could deal without him, which might seem bold. So you might logically think, well, you must have brought a left back in. I have, and I've also brought in another right back because 
Let's be frank, our team is a little bit of a mess at the moment when it comes to overall fitness levels. So, in terms of a right back, we've got here Juanjo Hernandez. What a fantastic name that is, first and foremost. Signed from Real Madrid. Um, this year he's been playing for Lille in Ligue 1 on loan. Um, I've decided to snap him up for £11 million. Don't love his personality of uh, unambitious, but overall he's a really good footballer. And there's kind of two great things about him. Firstly, he can play centre mid and he's very well suited actually to play deep line playmaker on defend. So in terms of as a you know depth option in that position, it's fantastic. But additionally, as a wing back at right back, he offers an alternative to Regina that we've just not had throughout the last kind of season. And every other week, I feel like Regina's telling me that he's tired if we just look at him. He suffered a lot. He's played a lot of games for us, bless him, because we've not really had a plan B. I've never really trusted Matt Smith to be that backup option in the right-back position. And so, as a result, he's just played an absolutely uh, ridiculous amount of money, uh, amount of matches. Not amount of money. Um, he deserves to be paid a ridiculous amount of money, though, to be fair, for the amount of football he's played. So, yeah, Regina's got a friend. Unfortunately, um, he's struggled a little bit in his first few games he got a knock although he did get an assist so he played one game he did actually play the entire match but yeah not a great sign when you get a little knock on your debut against Sheffield United but he got an assist on it so yeah whilst he won't be starting today because we're going to play Regina it's nice to have just a plan b in place because we've not really had that plan b and of course at left back we've needed an alternative option with Malang Sar going out and I've gone for Calafiori uh, who we have signed if we just look here from Inter Milan for 21 million pounds this guy has played left back in Syria his entire career he's had some really good years and some not good years has really struggled to ever get consistent first team football since his move to Inter Milan. Um, we've snapped him up for £21 million. His value has now shot up to close to £30 million. He's got 12 caps for Italy. He's a super, super well-rounded player. My scouts have told me he's consistent and likes important matches. With him having just joined the club, we've, of course, forgotten that knowledge because that's how football manager works and it's a bit silly. Um, if we just compare him to Regina, just so you get a bit of an idea, um, not a dissimilar player by any means, slightly worse mentals, not as quick, but a little better on the kind of physical front on the whole and technically a very astute player going forward and at 27 years old um he's probably one of the few kind of quote unquote real players we're gonna be able to sign here at forest before it starts getting to a point where all the real players are really really old and well if, if they're over the age of 29 you know me it's very unlikely i'm gonna make moves for them but no really good strength in depth signings which i think help solve an issue with the team that we've had which is just the sheer volume of fixtures has caught up with us. I was talking about the injuries, obviously, previously, before the last game. You can see here, so far in January, nine injuries now. We've had a hell of a lot throughout this season, it feels like, and they've just kind of piled up more and more. I, in fact, it's got to a point where I've started resting the players between every single game. Um, of course, after this January period, there's a moment of rest Kind of. Um, yeah, we, we've got a few fewer games in February to worry about, which is rather nice. Anyway, if we just look at the games since you were last here, of course, we played Chelsea and lost 5-1. Uh, we managed to beat Southampton in the FA Cup. A 2-1 win here was really, really good, um, although it did take penalties. It was a bit of a crazy game. Both teams playing on the attack. Both teams really going for it. Um, we managed to scrape through in the end, which was nice. Unfortunately, we then slipped up against Norwich City, away from home against a team who, of course, got promoted to the Premier League just last year. Um, and looking at things here, they were just the better team, frankly. Um, we got off to a good little start. Amlo scored before half-time, and we were cruising along, riding our luck perhaps a little, and then Adam Eder scored for them in the 78th minute, and with that, I decided, right, we need to go more attacking here. We need to go for it more. And to be fair, Norwich just got a foothold in the game. They continued creating opportunities in the last 10 minutes, and they probably got a deserved second goal in the game. So a 2-1 defeat, bitterly disappointing, because if we just take a quick look at Norwich City, they're not a particularly good team. They're not a team that I think we should necessarily be worrying about. Um, they're, they're, you know, don't get me wrong, they're not doing badly, but they're 14th in the league. That is a game that when we're in a title race, we can't afford to slip up in. And, uh, well, it has got slightly better, but I've not been overly convinced. Um, we beat Sheffield United 2-0. Adrian Smith and Wilson Samake getting two goals in the space of two minutes there. Against Burnley in the FA Cup fourth round, we got a 3-0 win. Playing a close to full-strength team, really good performances in this one. Amlo got another goal. 
Irk back on the goal scoring sheet. Uh, hasn't scored too many goals this year, but is currently leading the way with assists. He's got 14 to his name so far this campaign uh, out on the left wing for us. And the final goal scorer in the game was Wilson Samake, who has... I want to say he's found some goal-scoring form. His goal-scoring form in the league is non-existent, but in cup competitions, he's doing quite well. He's got three in the FA Cup, three in the Carabao Cup, and three in the Europa League. Maybe he's just a cup specialist when it comes to the striking department, because, let's be frank, in the league, he's been absolutely awful. Um, it's really not been particularly good from Wilson Samake. Anyway, in terms of where those results leave us, we are trailing the pack now quite significantly, to a point where maybe I need to shift focus to cup competitions. Of course, this game against City we've got coming up is the second leg of the Carabao Cup. Um, it is worth noting that the first leg finished 0-0. So, essentially, we're coming in with a clean slate. Um, if we just look at things here, a penalty shootout is to be used if scores are level after 90 minutes. So, there is no away goals. There's no shenanigans going on there. Um, this is going to be a straight 90-minute game that goes straight to um, kind of penalties if needed. I'm a little bit grateful for that, because if it went to extra time, I'm not sure our players would be able to survive the entire game. Anyway, going into this game, a bit of unfortunate news, Calafiori is out injured, so both of our new fullback signings picked up little knocks in their debuts. He's back in three days. I probably could risk him in this game, but I'm not going to, just because his match sharpness isn't there anyway. That does mean that Roberts is going to come in at left-back. I still feel, feel like this guy is a really good left-back option particularly with the stipulations we're under with Brexit, where we can only have a certain number of foreign players in our Premier League squad. Having someone who is this good be our backup left-back is certainly a nice position to find ourselves in. Um, we've played him fairly often this year. He's not actually done too badly. In the Europa League, he's shone particularly well. Um, his league form has left a little bit to be desired, although only a, a handful of appearances there. Elsewhere in the team, of course, we've got Toby in goal. He's had a good start to his time at the club without it being insane. He's kept clean sheets in 11 out of 23 league matches hasn't been able to break back into the Germany team I'm not sure if he ever will to be honest because I don't think he's quite over that kind of top level shall we say no, no disrespect Toby but you know we saw we signed you for 11 million and for that kind of price I'm not expecting the most world-class goalkeeper in the world anyway at right back we've got Regina there has been a little bit of interest from Inter Milan again this transfer window but that has now cooled as I said he's played a lot of football this year he's played 25 matches so far um he's been tired a lot he's been complaining a lot about the fact that he maybe needs a rest the but kind of the coaches have been begging me to give him a rest to stop playing him. I've not had that option. Now we have got that option in Hernandez, who now sits on the bench, which is nice. Anyway, centre back Pieter Schack is just about to sign a new contract. We are currently waiting um, on a work permit for it. I do believe. In fact, looking at it, I think he's actually already signed it. So maybe the work permit went through and I missed it. So he signed a new contract at the club, which is really good. No release clause featured. Alongside him, we are going to go with Navio, who is not growing. He's not getting taller, but he is turning into a really quick little centre-back option. Uh, and I wonder if he can jump. I wonder if he can learn to jump still, because I'm going to be honest, I'm kind of losing hope that he's going to get any better at his leaping. Uh, he's always going to have that gap in his game. But to be fair, uh, I feel like his bravery, aggression and heading combined with stuff like his technique and just his overall kind of ability to be in the right place at the right time. I'm hoping that, that, that those smarts, you know, he can be a, a kind of Cannavaro. He doesn't need to be a giant. He doesn't need to be the tallest player in the world. Maybe he can just do it with the ball at his feet. Uh, and yeah, he's going to get the nod for today's game. Hopefully, he's going to do the business. Asun Sao is back in the team. Hopefully, he's not going to get sent off. Of course, with uh, Hernandez coming into the team, we have now got a slightly different deep line playmaker option that we could possibly lean on. Someone who is, uh, you know, better defensively, a little better physically. Vision is a tad lower, but actually, when you look at it, they've got the exact same passing. And, uh, well, Asun Sao has marginally better vision. It's actually the flare difference, which really swings the graph to look significantly more in Gustavo's kind of favour. Um, vision, if you don't know, contains flair, vision and passing. They're the three factors in it. For a deep line playmaker, flair is significantly less important. So yeah, I think they can both do the deep line playmaker role to a pretty good level. At centre mid, mid, of course, we're going to go with Smith and Ricketts. Now Smith has always been a top draw player for us. He's had a pretty good season so far. Decent average rating in the Premier League. Um, I feel like centre mids this year in Football Manager don't end up being particularly standout performers, at least from my own personal experience. Experience. So certainly with this team, um, you know, I feel like Adrian Smith and uh, Ricketts and be it Lind or be it Dr. Medge, when they come in, they're not the most kind of flashy players in the world that you notice a ton. 
But to be honest, Adrian Smith and Ricketts, you know, they're quite complementary to each other, kind of two sides of the same coin, I feel like, you know, both very quick, both, you know, very good going forward and defensively, they kind of, it's almost like a mirror image when you look at it, their polygons. Um, they, they just work really well as a partnership. And of course, Ricketts was signed for 32 million once upon a time. Difficult to know whether or not you can say he's justified that price, but I would say seven assists and two goals at just over the halfway point in the season is a pretty good return for him. Anyway, out on the left-hand side, we've got Erk, who is leading the way when it comes to assists. He's got 14 in all competitions, seven of which have been in the league. Good to see him back in the team and playing fairly well as of late. He's been a little bit hit and miss. Some games he just doesn't turn off and I haul him off the pitch. Other times he comes on and he's just an absolutely kind of standout player in the team. Out on the right-hand side, we're going to go with Samake. As I've already said, his league form has been poor. But you know what? Steve Secker's out injured. We need plan Bs. He's been out there. Akamash has probably been the, the more likely go-to player, to be honest, in the same position. He's now got five goals and three assists in the Premier League. But not for the first time this year. He's injured again. It's become a bit of a recurring trend. You can see here repeated hamstring injuries. Uh, four injuries so far this season. And whilst they've not been kind of long-term injuries by any means. He's never really got a run of games going where he's been able to stay fit. But when he has played, he's looked really, really good for us. Anyway, up top, we've got Amlo, of course, top goal scorer in the Premier League, 18 goals to his name, continuing to improve a little bit. Great player. He is a kind of go-to obvious striking option. On the bench, Marcelo's done great this year as kind of an impact sub, yet to get a goal in the Premier League, but across all competitions, he's looked really, really solid, particularly when we've given him starts. His development, perhaps hasn't been quite as rapid as I might have hoped. Elsewhere, of course, we've got Lind and Medj. Um, they kind of fall into a similar mould as the other centre mids, really. Two players who are very good on paper. They look absolutely fantastic. I don't feel like I notice them every single game. But, you know, by the fact that we're fourth in the league, clearly we're winning the midfield battle in the majority of our games with how we want to play, so uh, they must be doing something right. Of course, we've got Calafiore and Hernandez, the two new additions on the bench, and alongside them, Stamani Grimes, who I feel like at this point has just fallen behind Navio. I feel like Navio's development, despite all the downsides, despite the fact maybe he can't jump, despite the fact he has got this competitive streak in him that has already seen him sent off once this year, um, the difference between the two players has just become almost... A little bit too big to ignore. I mean, Navio's still only 19. Birthday coming up in a couple of months' time. But he just looks like a top-quality player. And whilst he's not your traditional centre-back by any means, um, you know, in terms of he's not the most dominant in the air, the rest of his game is so good. The rest of his physicals are so good. There is a small part of me wondering if I should maybe train him to play left wing back, but ultimately I think with his off-the-ball flair, crossing and dribbling, all being below 10, I'd almost rather play him as this top-quality centre-back who just isn't the tallest, but you know more than makes up with it, uh, kind of with his overall athletic ability, with his pace, agility, balance, um, than kind of try and train him in a new position. Also, is it just me or has he got a massive forehead? That must, that must help with the, the 18 heading to be fair um but no i've i don't know i don't know how to feel about navio i mean you guys let me know what you think about navio i feel like he's done okay so far this year other than when he gets sent off i kind of want to stay patient with him but the fact he had two really good performances at right back albeit against weaker oppositions has kind of planted a seed of doubt as to ah oh, should i should I play him at left back? Could he play there? I don't think it's a decision that we have to make right now. It's not one that we need to rush into. Obviously, he's still got plenty of years left ahead of him. Anyway, let's get into the game against Man City. But I just wanted to give you, you know, a little a little rundown of the squad and where my head is at with a few of the players. Um, overall, obviously, it's a great little team. Is it a team that should be challenging for a Premier League title? I'd argue probably not yet. I think give it a couple of years and that would be kind of a fair expectation. It's a it's a team with some really exciting young players in it. Um, obviously, with the defeat against Norwich, we have lost a significant ground in the title race. You know, between that defeat and, of course, the defeat just now against Chelsea, um, we find ourselves in a situation where we are chasing things here. And it is going to be a really, really tough ask for us. Anyway, looking at their team just real quick. Um, key players, obviously, they've got Lotaro Martinez. They've got Cherki, who is the young Frenchman. They've got Lamptey, Badia Shili, Tadebo, um, Tommy Yashu as well, um, alongside De Jong. They've got a really good team. And then one of their big standout regens is Tarasov. I know people like to see the standout regens. This is their best player, in my opinion. He's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, he's weird because he's not the most athletic player in the world, but as far as attacking centre mid or striking options go, 
I don't think you're going to get much better than this. He loves big matches. He's super consistent. How much did they sign him? 38 million. I think I had this guy on my radar as well, which is the worst thing. One of those players where you kind of spot them whilst playing football manager, but you're in the lower leagues and you go, that's that's the guy in it. That's the guy who's going to cause me pain and suffering in five years' time when I'm in the Premier League. Not quite reach the top flight early enough to be able to sign him for myself. Either way, let's see if we can give them a good game here. As I said, it's 0-0 after the first leg, so this is all up for grabs. As we win possession in their half, Irk to whip it goalward. Samake's there, heads it just wide of the post. I thought Amlo might have been able to get a small touch on it. Inside 10 minutes, though, we're on the front foot. We're going for them. We're having an effort, which is kind of more than what we did against Chelsea, it feels like, in the opening stages of the game. Anyway, they've got a corner here. Cherky to whip it in. Badia Shile heads just over the crossbar. First leg finish 0-0 and there was no highlight. So this is already an improvement as they have a chance here. Trying to get it to Tarasov, their big main Russian man in the midfield. And well, they've just turned over possession. Amlo, Amlo, two defenders around him. Can he shrug them off? He tries to. He gets the shot away. It's a good save by the keeper. City giving away possession again very, very cheaply. Not for the first time in this game. Both highlights for us have come as a result of them giving away the ball in the midfield. But, well, we need to be better, good here. As Adrian Smith, what a tackle that is. Roberts gobbles it up. And uh, we, we live to fight another day. Anyway, it's a goal kick for them here. It's going to be Nizovic with it. The Tommy Yashu and now with Tarasov. Of course, like most teams towards the top of the league, they're quite good with the ball at their feet, Man City. They're quite good at controlling the play. They've got a lot more quality than us. Obviously, their wage budget is twice as much as ours, and they are in the Champions League on the regular. So you'd be worried if it wasn't better than ours, really, wouldn't you? Anyway, they cut inside. It's Cherky with it. Hits it into the side netting. That was scary. Also, I think it's Cherky, because I think... Well, it's a French name. I don't know. Anyway, Ricketts over the ball. Get me a goal, lads. Get me a goal. Peter Schack, you big boy. Seventh goal of the season for him on his big old forehead. We make it 1-0. We break the deadlock in this tie. It is worth noting that Chelsea won the first leg of the other semi-final 3-0. So I want to celebrate if we win this, but I will know that the team that just beat us 5-1 in the league are our oppositions for the final. And we're probably going to have to be a little bit better than that. Anyway, 40 minutes gone. They've got a chance here from a throw-in. As much as I want to worry about our final opposition, there is a long time left in this game. This game, I imagine, has more goals in it. And, uh, yeah, uh, let's not get carried away just yet. As Lamptey, Fredri Cherki, who pulls it back, and it's Lehman there. Stefan Lehman, out on the right wing for them, scores. And just before half-time, it's not a great time to concede. Nice build-up play. Lamptey's ball through there is superb. And then the pullback here, the run actually is incredible. The vision to see that run is equally as impressive. He's come from absolutely no man's land there at the back post. How good is Lehman? Let's just have a quick peek. Uh, he's pretty good. He's, pretty, he, he's probably better than our wingers, <laughs> which is kind of the benchmark, I feel like, at this point. I like our team. We've got a good team. But I feel like it's a team that can't truly compete in terms of direct comparisons with teams like Man City, Man United and Chelsea just yet. I, d I don't think that would be like an unfair assessment of our team, put it that way. Anyway, we're coming up to the hour mark. I'm going to make a couple of changes here. In terms of what I'm going to change out, I'm going to take off Samaka and bring in Akamash. I think he's coming back from injury, but has been absolutely top draw for us. Elsewhere, Sun Sal's been a little bit quiet today, so let's bring in Juanjo Hernandez. Um, to come back into the first team and there's a small part of me that wants to make a triple change but you know what we're, get, we're gonna remain patient I'm gonna hold on to one sub with half an hour left to tie ourselves up and not leave ourselves with any further changes that does just feel like a little bit of an unnecessary risk anyway we are 15 minutes away from added time and well not added time penalties it, there is no added time there is no extra time it, go, it just goes straight to the penalty shootout if need be but there's still some defending going to need to be done here. Tarasov to Lamptey. Back into the box. We block one effort. Tarasov back to Lamptey. I do not like this. We block it away. Akamash gets there. It's going to be a two-on-two -two at the back. He's bringing it forward. Can he pick out Amlo? Not quite. That was always going to be a difficult pass to pull off. The defender was in a really good position for it. Ten minutes left. One last shout of demand more. We've got one last sub in our back pocket. I'm going to bring in Marcelo for Irk. 
who's not had a particularly great game out on the left-hand side. Kind of goes back to what I said before. I feel like sometimes Eric has these super standout performances that sees him leading the assist charts, and other times he just doesn't quite show up. Anyway, they've got a corner here. Oh, okay, it, was, it would have been offside. That was a heart-in-mouth moment. I just skipped to beat everyone. We're going straight to penalties. We're going straight to penalties. Well, Marcelo can take them. Akamash can take them. We don't have penalty takers, everyone. This has been an ongoing issue here. I'm going to leave... Uh, do I want to leave the best shootout taker till last? Oh, this is not a great situation, is it, in terms of our set-piece takers? It's actually shocking how bad our penalty takers are when you look at it. It's crazy. Maybe something we need to work on in the dressing room. I think we'll go with this lineup. So Regina's going to take the first penalty, Akamash the next, Marcelo, Amlo, Ricketts, Navio. I think makes the most sense right now. And let's give a little bit of a team talk. Try to relax. Know where you're putting your penalty, lads. I've got faith in you. Look at that. The pre-penalty team talk. They're all absolutely loving it. Also, we've got Pep Guardiola here. Does it look like Pep? I know it's difficult to see through the kind of grey box, but we get a close-up of the bench. There's me wearing my suit. I look bloody brilliant. Anyway, let's get into the game. Penalty shootout. Regina to shoot first. Game on. I don't know why I'm commentating like it's the darts. Wearing the number two, Regina, get us off to the perfect start. Tell you what, considering he can't take penalties, allegedly, that's a blooming good penalty. Anyway, we're looking at Toby. Tobias Huffnagel springs in. Isn't going to get to that one. Yeah, there's a reason I just call him Toby. It's because it's a bit of a mouthful in these moments. Anyway, Akimash to step up next. He's been good this season. Can he keep his good season going? He can. Down the middle he goes. Keeper goes the wrong way. Now it's on Tarasov, the man who I've bigged up, who I've said is the one that... I don't want to say he's the one who got away, because I don't think we ever really had a chance, but he's blooming good and he scored his penalty. I, I will now pull the shocked Pikachu face of pure surprise at the fact he's managed to score that. Marcelo, our best penalty taker, probably going to miss because I've said that. I take it all back. These have been good penalties so far. It might just be me, but in Football Manager, I feel like penalties get missed more often than they probably should be. Anyway, De Jong steps up for them. Can we have a save from Toby? We can't. After three penalties apiece, the teams have played this perfectly. And it's now on the leading striker for Nottingham Forest. It's Amlo to step up. The German, 23 years old, puts it into the bottom corner. No nonsense from him. And a lot of pressure now on Vatina to score the all-important goal for City to keep them in this in the fourth set of penalty kicks. Steps up, doesn't even stop his run, just jogs all the way from the half line, way line and finishes it. And now for all intents and purposes, it is sudden death everyone here at the Etihad. It's Ricketts to step up, to apply the pressure to City, and he does just that. Great penalty for him. And now we wait for a long walk-up, because this is Football Manager. We've got to get the tension going on the penalty shootout. Huffnagel springs in, getting in goal. Tagsuf steps up for them. We're in the number 30. I hope you're ready, Toby. Make yourself a hero, Toby. Make yourself a hero, my friend. He hasn't. Everyone has scored their penalties. This is pretty crazy. I didn't set anyone up beyond Navio because they're all just so bad at penalties I decided it wasn't important. Navio steps up and I'll tell you what, he keeps the great run of penalties going. As I said, not done anyone beyond Navio. Now it's complete like look of the draw. They can choose amongst themselves who's going to go next. Who's to take this for City? It's going to be Lehman, who scored the goal in kind of regular time to get City back into this game. Has to score this. Steps up. The number 21 hits it. Oh my word, it's a save by Toby. And we win the penalty shootout. I don't quite believe it. Not a bad little bounce back after the previous result. Toby gets man of the match. And you know what? We rode our luck a little bit. We've relied on the luck of the draw with the penalties, but we left ourselves in a position to do it. Luis Navio steps up and scores a penalty. Is there anything he can't do besides jumping? I don't think there is. And then Toby, albeit with his first save of the shootout, saves that penalty from Lehman, who scored in regular time. And that, my friends, is going to see us going to the EFL Cup final. A real shot at silverware. As I've already said, the bad news is it's very, very likely to be Chelsea. Um, barring a crazy, unheard of swinging kind of results. So you can see here West Ham, who, of course, were doing quite well a couple of um, years ago, it feels like, in the Premier League. They are struggling this season down in 17th. Also, Sheffield United, who finished fourth, they're in 18th place in the league this year. It's kind of a crazy 
fall from grace from a team who were ahead of us, of course, in the race for European football last year. But no, we're into the uh, kind of Carabao Cup final, which is very, very exciting stuff. Quite when that slots in around our Europa League games, I'm not entirely sure. You can see here, Sims raises a player fitness concern. Peter Shack and Regina need, need a little rest. He's, he's, he's struggling, everyone. Don't worry, Gregory. We've got, a, we've got an alternative. We've got a backup plan. You can go and have a rest, mate. Go and sleep it off. Have a quiet week. We, we can deal without you. I, I promise you it's going to be fine. There is no pressure for you to play. Anyway, looking further ahead, given our recent kind of downturn in league form, I think we will come back next time for the EFL Cup final. Um, I don't know when the Europa... Actually, no, I do know when the Europa League's going to be. It's going to be here. But yeah, next time, I think we will do the games at the start of March. Right now, there are two games scheduled for in two days. Obviously, that Man City game is going to get moved somewhere. Um, but yeah, certainly the EFL Cup final tomorrow. Maybe we'll bundle it up with some other bits and pieces. I think for tomorrow's video, we might take a little look at the club dynamics, kind of the hierarchy, the who's who of our Nottingham Forest squad as, you know, there's been a fair bit of turnover in recent years. And whilst there's definitely some standout players who have become the kind of main men at the club, it's always interesting to see quite how they fit into the actual dynamics in terms of how the game reads it all. Who are the actual squad leaders and such? But anyway, guys, that's going to wrap up everything from me today. A tale of two halves, a great result against Man City, an awful one against Chelsea. As you can see, our league form is not particularly great in terms of where it leads us. Um, we are, you know, comfortably in the top four as things stand, but Chelsea running away with it, nine points clear, albeit with us having a game in hand, feels like that might be quite tough to turn around at this point. But... We'll do our best, we'll see how we get on, and of course we will be back next time. It is me, Jack, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. I'm out.